Hi everyone and welcome, John here. In this video today we're going to be showing you a simple and easy way to save data from your Python programs into a database. Um, having your data be persistent is a very useful thing to be able to do. Um, we could use uh, CSV files or JSON, um, which is nice and easy but not so easily manageable or searchable, um, especially when your files get larger. So this is why learning a database is a really important skill. Um, but for beginners it can be quite daunting because you've got a lot more SQL commands to learn which uh, might find, you might find difficult or it might get in the way when you're trying to learn the Python as well. Um, so we're going to use a library called Dataset which is basically a wrapper around the SQL which lets us talk to a proper database um, but using Python commands only. Um, it's based around using dictionaries which is a Python staple and this makes it very very easy to use and pick up. OK, so let's get going. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we've got dataset installed. And it's a simple pip command. It's pip install dataset, just like that there. And then we need to import it into our program. So if we open up this pi file, we can look at starting to create our database. Um, first thing we need to do is we need to import dataset, which we've done here. And then we need to create our database. Now this is really simple if you're using VS Code or something you can literally just go into your sidebar and, and do new file and I'll call this one uh, products.db and it automatically thinks it's a database file. I'm using Sublime for my examples but it's basically the same thing as if you're using VS Code. Just create a new file and save it as a .db. So now we've created our database file we need to connect to it. Uh, this is done with a simple command, so if we do db is equal to dataset.connect. Now to connect to a database, there's a few different methods we can use. I prefer to use the SQLite me uh, method, which is basically like this. We just have to type this command in like this here, and we called it products.db. Now we can do this because this is in our same folder as our PyScript. If it wasn't, we would need to put the path of the database here. Uh, this basically just tells us that we're connecting to this database. Now all databases are made up of tables, so we need to create one. And dataset lets us do that very, very simply. Um, we can go table is equal to db, and then we can name our table here. Now I'm going to name, name this one uh, clothing. We save that. Now if we run that, hopefully we get no problems, no errors, great. So now we've created our table uh, here called clothing, we need to add some items to it. Now as I said earlier, using dataset as our wrapper, we need to uh, use dictionaries to add items to our database. So when we do it this way, it will automatically create all the columns for us depending on what data we use. This is the simplest way, but it, and it gives you a little bit less control. Um, we'll talk about IDs in a minute. Uh, but first, let's create a item to add to our database. So if we just say item, and we create a dictionary, and let's say, uh, let's give it a UPC, and let's call that something like t-shirt 001, and name, and we can say uh, black t-shirt, maybe, something like that, and then Let's give it a size as well, and let's just say small. So now we've created our item dictionary. We want to insert that into our table. That's a real simple command. It's table.insert, and then pass in our dictionary. There are many different ways you can do this. I just prefer to create my dictionary first. We could have done it all in one line, but this way splits it out, makes it easier to see. So if we've done that right, we run that. Great. So now we've inserted this item into our database. Now I'm going to comment out the insert for the moment, and we're going to query the um, we're going to query the database and see what information's in there. And hopefully it is this. So if we want to see what tables are in our database, we can print out db.tables, and this should tell us that we have one table here, and it's called clothing, which is the one that we created here with this command. You can have multiple tables. Uh, we're just using this one at the moment. If we wanted to see what columns there were, uh, we can do print db, and then we call our table, which is clothing, and then we do dot columns, like this. If we run that, we can see 
the, the columns we created is UPC, name, and size, which are the ones here. If we were to add, the, with using this method, uh, another item that had another uh, thing in our dictionary, it would add a column into our table for us. And then this entry would have none in that. And I'll show you that in just a second. Um, if we wanted to see what items are in our table, we would just loop through it. So if we do that, we comment this print out here. Let's loop through it. So let's say for product, yeah, let's do, uh, yeah, in, let's move this down so we can see, and call our database, which was clothing, like this. Let's do print product. So this should loop through every one that we've got there. And we can see it's returned an ordered dict for us. And we can see that this is the UPC, the name, and the size that we had for our item here. Now, it's given us a ID back. Um, and this is an automatically assigned ID, and it's an integer. Um, this is what is going to be used to, to uniquely identify this item in this database table. Now, this is really important because automatically it will start at one and it will increment up. However, if we were to take the same item and insert again, we're going to come back and we're going to see that we have exactly the same thing here, same UPC name and size, but it's going to have a different ID. Now, there are cases where automatically incrementing the ID um, like this will work perfectly fine, but there will be cases where perhaps we didn't, like this one, where we didn't want to add this again because we want to create our own ID. So to create our own ID, we would need to be more specific with our table when we create it. So to create our table uh, with our specified ID, we need to do a little bit more different. So I'm going to remove uh, this and I'm also going to remove this. So let's create our own table. So let's call this table two for now. And we're going to do db.create table. Now this lets us specify what we want um, to have our ID as. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's create our table and let's, uh, let's call it t-shirts for now. So it's different. And we would do primary ID. Now this is where we would decide what our primary ID is. Now, because I think that this should be our primary ID here, I'm going to put UPC in, and that's going to be our primary ID. However, it will assume that our primary ID is going to be an integer, but ours actually has text in it. So we need to add in another parameter here, and we need to add in primary type. I'll put this on a new line. Primary type is equal to, and we want to add in, db types and it's a string and I'm going to put a cap of 25 characters on there actually I could probably be a bit, little, a bit lower 15 so what this is saying is that we're going to create our new table call this, this and every entry needs to have a primary ID of the UPC so if we were to try and add this item without this line it will fail and we'll get an error so we must have this line and we're also saying that our type is a string so if we now, uh, let's run that, and we should get no problems. Okay, great. Now if we try and add this item to our table, we can do table to dot insert item. We've added that. So let's, again, let's print uh, db dot tables. See what we get back. Oh, I've got an error. You see, right. I'll show you this now that I've accidentally just brought this up so we can understand why it's happened. The text is quite big, but somewhere around here we can see unique constant failed. And that is because I tried to add in, see I left my insert command here, I tried to add in another item that had the same UPC. So if we, if we now comment that out so we don't try and add that item again, we can see that we are got all the way down to our print statement, which is telling us which tables are in this database. And we have two, we have clothing and t-shirts. So now if we do db and let's say our new one, which is t-shirts, 
dot columns columns and run that we can see UPC name and size which is different to when we had the other one dot columns which automatically gave us an ID so in this one here we've specified with this primary ID UPC that every UPC must be unique and it's a string and it's the primary ID which is why there is no ID here it's just called UPC so what we can do now if I get rid of this we could add another item and I'm just going to change this data here just to make it simple to give you an idea so we'll change this to a 2 and we'll just call this white t-shirt and we'll make it small and we'll insert this item there we go and we'll add in three and we'll call red and they can all be small for now and we'll add this one great so now let's comment out our insert and come down here and we'll do four product in and it's db and it was t-shirts print product we run that we can see that we've returned three entries which we put in each with a unique UPC and a description. And just like uh, JSON or anything like that, if we wanted to reference certain parts, we could just call, uh, let's just say UPC, and let's print that. We can print the UPC of each one. So I'm gonna quickly show you a way to handle the error if you're trying to add um, uh, a, a duplicate item which we, co which we uh, covered earlier here. And it says, unique constraint failed. So what we can do is we can use a try and accept to put around our insert, uh, which means if it throws up an error, we can um, ignore it and move on through our program because we're trying to add something that's already there. So we can do try, indent this, and then accept. And let's say, uh, let's just print out so we know already in database and then pass so now if we run this again we've skipped past this error because it's thrown up it's already in there and it should have said we're already in the database but it hasn't there we go now it has already in DB so if I was to try and add one again it will come back and say it's already there you can't do it um, but if we were to go to four and say green and we put in a print statement in here so we can see what's happening added to like this we can go added and now we've got four and again if we did five and we went uh, purple like that added and we've got five okay so hopefully that um that should cover off some of the basics of how this works, how to create your own tables and how to look, look at working with your own IDs. Uh, we're going to move into a slightly more practical example now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of my old web scraping scripts that I've made which gets uh, data from a PC parts website and gives you back the price of those parts and we're going to store that information into our database and we're going to look at how we could save that and how we can query that.